Welcome to this Fain online event. Hello, Fern. Hello. <laughs> you can now introduce yourself as an author when you go on things. Yeah. You know, point, celebrity pointless. Hello, I'm Fern, I'm an oh, author. Yeah. <laughs> I just did that the other day. Did <laughs> How did it go? Oh, am I allowed to say or will be? Yeah. Oh, so I might cut it. <laughs> we, we won. But Alison, I was on with my friend Alison and she was like screaming and hyperventilating every time she got an answer right. So that was a bit much. <laughs> but you did, so did you say I'm Fern and I'm an author? Uh, no, I tried oh. to and they didn't want to <laughs> talk about that. I'm Fern and I've got a book out very soon. <laughs> I actually have funny stuff to tell you about Pointless after. Oh yeah, after yeah. So I'm doing it next week of course. <laughs> okay, so there was a clue about um, what, who was the director of Citizen Kane and then it had the initials OW and do you know AJ and Curtis Pritchard? Yeah. They said Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> That'll be me. That'll be me next week. God, I'm done. Um, you started out as a writer at university. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to be a journalist when I was at uni. Yeah. And then I got um, on a postgrad doing the training for it. Um, but then I quit to do stand up. So really, this is now me coming back to what my original yeah. plan was to write. I think. But that's been a dream of yours to write a book, hasn't it? I think so. But I didn't think it would be about a cause. About uh, what? I didn't think it would be, as you know how you get people that attach themselves to causes, yeah, I didn't yeah, think yeah. I would be one of them people. Is it about a cause? Well, what, well it's about yeah, autism, yeah, yeah, I want yeah. people to learn more about autism and specifically I didn't want to do like an autism by numbers book because there's quite a lot of memoirs by late diagnosed women. They're all really good but yeah. um, autism's described in such deficit uh, based terms like we're the ones with the problem. And I wanted to have a look at how odd female communication is yeah, um, and how odd a lot of being a woman is through the lens of an autistic person. Yeah. Can I just say, it's a bloody great book. Oh, that it's is... It's a great book. It's I'm, so uh, interesting. So many cool. stories, very funny. Mm. Yeah. Are you nervous about it coming out? Yeah, because at first I was worried. Well, I kept reassuring myself when I was writing it, no one's going to read it. <laughs> then already a few people we know have read it. Uh, so now the other bad case scenario is happening, which is people are going to be doing it. You sort of need that really to sort of justify the money. Yeah. <laughs> but it feels like we're going to know all this embarrassing stuff. You poured everything into writing the book, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't, I didn't do the book because I, I wasn't like approached to do a book and then thought, oh, I may as well do it. I sort mm. of pushed my agent and said this is what I would rather do rather than do like more TV stuff over the next year mm. and um, yeah I just worked on it loads and loads because it just feels really final if you get it wrong yeah um, I've even I've still been cha trying to make changes up till Friday and they're like we're publishing it <laughs> I think like the senior editor wants to throw her computer out a window because uh, I've changed so many things really yeah I saw online you put um, lap dance you'd looked up how like if it was yeah, two I words think or one yeah she saw that on my Instagram yeah 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 you're quite vocal I don't know if that's yeah. I don't know if that's a personality thing or an autism thing but you say what you feel and mm. you express yourself online which is quite refreshing refreshing um, mm -hmm. because you just say exactly what you think and it's funny and refreshing I think comedians find it refreshing because they're like mm. well, I get told off if I do that but Fern oh, just does no, what I, she wants yeah no I do get told off do you think that's that's um uh, it's really hard to tell I suppose what what is personality and what is a kind of you know or oh, what's an yeah. autistic trait? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I got diagnosed, that was a head fuck because even though I already knew I was autistic for years before that, yeah. when you get diagnosed, you really start learning. Like, you start thinking, is every single thing about me autism related then? But um, then you meet other autistic people and everyone's so di People need to view it a lot so more different. neutrally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, so, so different. different. Like, yeah, that's what I think, because I know quite a few autistic people mm. in Brazil, and they're all very wildly different. So you see, yeah. I don't know, yeah, you think, well, what is the thing then? But our, commu our communication style is always the same, so it's always easier to communicate with other autistic people, because um, we don't... Well, for example, like I was working with an autistic person recently and they don't tend to smile a lot and yeah. that kind of thing wouldn't bother me because I know it's just not 
a yeah. crowd to the yeah. to do it. Yeah. Um, where what were we talking about before? Oh, about me being honest online. Yeah. yeah that's always been a thing in comedy. People praising me for oh, how, how are you so honest? As if it's a magic trick. But as I understand it, that's how um, non-autistic people operate. Like for ages, whenever I told people I was autistic, they would make this face at me. And I kept telling my autism therapist, why do people make this face? And it's sort of like this. <laughs> <laughs> and she said it's because you guys are like always concentrating on saying the right thing. So then when you don't know the right answer, you just like start to panic. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've had to scale back my honesty online because my agent's been like, it doesn't get like, because I'd walk into a room and go, fucking men. <laughs> yeah. And then actually you're, what you're doing is making the room, you're walking into a room with this sort of agenda of negativity against one type of person. Yeah. And then actually I thought, well, I don't know if that's getting me where I want to get like if I want equality yeah. or I want less rapists and pedos to operate mm -hmm. you know it like me doing a tweet about a, a sort of hooded tweet about some show like booking yeah. a rapist it doesn't get me anywhere I, also, yeah I think it, in that way it, more it, now. It, it, it's harder to get the power it's harder to get equality without the power and sometimes we're stopping ourselves to get the power if we're st pulling down a yeah. thing in a way so it's really complicated i think all that but but yeah. to some people that's almost second nature to yeah. operate in that way and some people are so slick at that kind of thing whereas for yeah. me i spent years and years studying how to be that way and constantly trying to remind myself that the way i act online it's basically like my shop front and it's yeah, a business yeah. and stuff yeah. But then, I mean, I still have times where I say catastrophic things. Like I went to this party for a TV show that I was on. There was a rap party mm -hmm. and I was really like happy and relaxed because I enjoyed the job so much. Yeah. <laughs> you probably know the show I'm yeah. on about. And I just went through one person after another saying insulting <laughs> things to them. I wasn't drinking. I don't need alcohol to say yeah. things that I regret the next day yeah but i just i don't mean to do it's like oh like when i tried to compliment you i was telling my friend this last night yeah because i think i ended up in the book i noticed i, I didn't see it in the book i'm sure i put it in the book i can't see it in the book but i, I oh, but, yeah yeah yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Got it. so basically <laughs> i like noticing patterns and i and also i don't often sometimes i don't look at people's faces i'm just looking at their hands and I noticed all the female comedians, we all had quite big hands mm. and long fingers. Yeah. So I was like, maybe that's connected to why we're funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then I met you and I said, oh, you've got big hands. <laughs> that was me trying to say. That was you socialising. <laughs> yeah, that, it's like yeah. sometimes instead of saying, because sometimes I, I have learned like you're supposed to compliment women on their dress or something. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out the wrong way. But then would you be offended if someone said that to you? Because I think that's where, it, it, if someone said to you, you've got big hands, would mm -hmm. you then take on the offence of that? Okay, so that thing where I have to put myself in someone else's shoes, mm. I've had to really work at doing that. And that's yeah. the only, I have to, it's almost like I had to train my brain to do that. Yeah, because I guess if you emphasize, because I guess would you be offended if I if I didn't know, if I said to you, oh, you've got massive hands, would you take that on as? I mean, everyone's got different triggers, but would you? Because I guess that's the yeah. thing. If if because you know, I told you about my friend's dad. So my friend's dad has got autism. Yeah, and my friend said that he can't register when people do nice things for him or say nice things mm -hmm. to him. He can only register the insults, and we're all a bit like that. It's from a cave. Now yeah, then, where yeah. You couldn't eat the poisonous berries, so you take the insults more because it's more dangerous, yeah. or whatever. But she said, yeah, that he can't take on the nice things that people have done for him. But would you say that that's a um, symptom of autism? Because she seems to think it I is. I wouldn't say it's an autistic trait. Yeah. Um, I think a lot, you, what you have to bear in mind is autistic people, and if it's someone's dad, someone who's yeah. middle aged um, and who hasn't yeah. learned how to live with his autism. Mm -hmm you spend years and years being socially excluded and being isolated so often you have a lot of 
uh, trauma built yeah. up from that kind of thing. Yeah. So you you end up because people talk about autistic people being antisocial. I'm not antisocial. A lot social. of it is just like a weariness, and yeah. sometimes you think, oh, I make so many. Um, like faux pas when I'm socialising with people that it would be easier not to go to this party yeah. or it would just be easier not to go to this thing because yeah. I know I'm going to say something wrong Yeah. so it's almost better to get a rep as someone who doesn't you but know. I so, don't think you I think you're very and maybe you've learnt this and it's very exhausting for you but I do think you're very uh, good in social situations I think you're fun oh. around and I think people like that you're sometimes quite blunt I mean it's funny I mean yeah. we had like in the early days before we knew each other that well and before the diagnosis we had a few things where I was like fair <laughs> say that I and know that, but, but then, I was so sad because I was but, like a massive fan of you no, no, but, th- but then I learned from that as well so I think you said to me no one can believe how old you are we've all been talking and no one can believe how old you Cause are because you you're so youthful I, and I your skin it's a, is it, so amazing it was a compliment but I was like what do you mean over I hadn't yeah, come, yeah I hadn't come to terms with my age and I was a bit like that with it so when you did when you said that and I said what do you mean everyone's talking about it and you were like oh I knew you'd react like this and you was like, I meant it as a compliment and I was like oh and then so for a second, for like a minute, I was like uncomfortable, but that was my own issue. That you yeah, that was before. such a hard night. But then I went on stage and said my age because you had, you yeah. had you'd made me realise I need to get comfortable. No one else should be able to destabilise me by saying my own age back at me. So then I went on stage and said my age and I thanked you and I said, oh, that was, the, oh, problem. Yeah. the problem was with me, not with you. Yeah. So yeah. like initially I'm like, what do you mean everyone's talking about my age? And then we saw. I was in a hot tub of male comedians yeah, yeah, yeah. and everyone was saying it in this car. I look good for my way. age, but like, yeah. yeah. But, but so that's an example of you didn't do anything wrong there. It was just, it was more abrupt, maybe. And th- then I'm like, oh, the problem was with me. So I, yeah. I think you're hard on yourself because it's funny if you go into a room <laughs> full of people that also know you mm. and they don't, like, if they want to take offense, I think everyone should get less offended about everything anyway, generally. Well, the thing is, is. I would like to think that I'm imagining that it turns people against you, but there there was a study done where they had uh, people chat to autistic people and then chat to a group of non-autistic people. And even when um, participants didn't know that someone was autistic, the autistic people were consistently rated as less likeable, less attractive, less intelligent, less trustworthy. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I've seen it, like I've seen people who are socially clumsy who, whenever I'm observing it from outside and I see another person because there are yeah. o- other autistic people in comedy yeah and there's a, there's people who I suspect are autistic who haven't been diagnosed yeah and I've seen people be socially clumsy and people who we know who would think of themselves as really left-leaning and liberal who would never judge someone who wasn't good at English for example yeah, yeah, are yeah. so harsh on people who aren't socially fluent yeah and I think how can you not see that this person's struggling yeah, yeah. um so yeah communication is a two-way thing yeah so I wish people would think of it more that way rather than we've got a communication problem yeah yeah um yeah it's very interesting um Thanks. Someone suggested I get tested um, recently. Okay. No, there's definitely something though, because you're easier to get on with. And remember when I, I came to see your show in Edinburgh? Yeah. I went to see it two times. Yeah. And then the second time I brought along my American friend who'd got me to go to this improv show. Mm. And I was chatting to you after and I was like, oh, we just went to see an improv show. And you went, how awful. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. I do, oh, I do <laughs> improv. I do improv. <laughs> <laughs> we can cut that then. But no, 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 no. Just keep in that. I do it. <laughs> it's just a joke. But um, but yeah, no. I do think maybe I'll get tested. Um, how hard was it to write such a personal book? Or it might not. Oh, have been really hard. That's, hard. A, that's, that's a leading question. It might have been cathartic. Mm, no, the, <laughs> the first one. Well, the chapter on meltdowns. I submitted that last because I was like, they're going to think I'm bananas. But um. But at the same time, I had to write about all the worst bits because so many people try and say, oh, we're all a little bit autistic. Um, and I think once they read the book, people aren't going to go, oh, yeah, we're all a bit like that. Because I've had people say to me, we're all a bit autistic. And I want to go, so do you just come home and just start punching the walls and stuff for yeah. no reason. You shouldn't be ashamed of that though. And everyone has, I think, I don't want to say what that, that, because that was your, but everyone has, 
uh, it's still relatable. Like I bit really, someone, yeah. <laughs> I bit someone's face when I was young because I was so angry. <laughs> but you live and learn. And I threw a Hoover down the stairs at my boyfriend. So we've all had moments. I mean, what what you described sounds mm. really um, difficult. And, yeah, it's uh, like very, torture. Yeah, harrowing. But but no one is going to think you're a monster because we've all had glimpses at that. So mm. without the right sort of, you know eye on it or whatever or if we were like you know autistic or whatever we can imagine being consumed we've all been consumed by anger so it is relatable and it's very helpful for other people that might go through that well that's the thing is for a meltdown isn't anger it looks like anger it's right. a build-up of sensory overstimulation yeah so that's the problem and yeah. i think like i said in the book if i hadn't have been because it's very taboo for women to show things mm. that work like anger and I, I think if I didn't have meltdowns, I wouldn't have ended up getting diagnosed because I knew something was really, really wrong and I knew it wasn't anger. It seemed to happen if I had a build-up of like lots of socialising, lots of fluorescent lights and noise. Mm. And then, um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. These, these ones are all right. Those, those are like kind of bad ones. But like, um, uh, so I think that was what led to me getting diagnosed and I didn't know that the reason I was having meltdowns was because I was working really hard to mask my autism yeah. in the outside world because I kept thinking I can fix this yeah, I, if yeah. I just like read up enough I'm gonna get rid of it which yeah. is mental yeah um the more you try not to be autistic the more autistic you'll be like um yeah. so yeah it's a daft thing to do <sighs> yeah I enjoyed those chapters I didn't think how crazy i just thought oh <laughs> I, I, I thought oh that my heart went out to you and i just thought wow there must be a lot of people doing you know taking chunks out of the wall <laughs> you know, there just, are there yeah, are yeah, like yeah, i've got yeah. a friend whose um sister is autistic and she was just like yeah we regularly have holes in the wall where her sister just punches through it and punches yeah. through doors but no one talks about it People are always going on about, no one talks about grief, no one talks yeah, about yeah, yeah. Everyone's always banging on about grief. <laughs> no, I can tell you no one's talking about meltdowns because anytime I looked for advice online, all the advice was for parents of autistic children, even though autistic children grow up to be adults. Yeah. Um, what have you done? Have you got... You could get a punch bag and get really good at boxing. No, my mum used to oh, say that. Um, sorry. I basically have to live like Gwyneth Paltrow in terms of like doing loads of stuff. Remember I was messaging you, I've been going to yoga a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yoga a lot or like, for example, anytime I know there's like, you you basically put yourself on a sensory diet. That doesn't mean diet like the food yeah, you yeah. eat. It means you reduce overstimulating stuff as much as possible. So now when I leave the house, I wear noise cancelling headphones. Um. I wouldn't... I realised I was smoking a lot of weed for ages and I realised that made my sleep worse, which made me have meltdowns. Yeah. I exercise a lot, I walk a lot. Yeah. So, um, avoid alcohol. Yeah. There's just loads of different things you can do to That's good. help it. Yeah. yeah. But I should have been taught all this when I was like a little kid. That's yeah. the ideal. I don't think they knew, did they? They didn't know really, like the research Yeah. It was, was, was limited because it's quite... Yeah, I just don't think they know. Well, that was also why I put all that stuff in the book, because I thought mm. for non-autistic readers, this is going to be a bit like, what? And no, it's, but boring. everyone knows people. I've got people in my life who are autistic. Everyone knows, yeah. but you know, roller skaters, weirdly, a lot of roller skaters are autistic in ADHD. That's, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. And a lot of them wear headphones, which makes sense now. Uh-huh. And weightlifting. <laughs> I'm not going to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, um, so I did a powerlifting competition last year, and... Um, so many autistic people at that there's wow. like um because it, it's really regulating to pick up a heavy weight because a yeah. lot of autistic people we don't have a good sense of where our bodies end and the world begins so i like bump into stuff a lot or yeah. trip over my feet a lot and weightlifting putting muscle on really helped that wow um but that was the reason i put that in the book was because i thought i only found all this out because i'm rich that was quite like a blunt way of putting mm, it. Mm. And I was able to access this really good I know, yeah. therapy. Mm. It was like a new kind of therapy that they were trialing. Um, so I put it in the book because I was just constantly getting autistic people messaging me asking for advice. Yeah. And I didn't want to share it on Instagram because I just thought comedians yeah, yeah, are going to yeah. take the piss out of me. Well, they, I don't think they would. I think well, it's quite a few. Yeah, yeah. Cynical. yeah, I think there's quite a lot of 
autistic comedians. But yeah, I know what you mean. But there's also comedians take the pill. Yeah, I know, yeah. I'm always like, well, <laughs> look at this. You do <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> That's what you think of the Yeah, because I know what I'm like. So I would always like have in my mind people. You get what you give out, you've got to stop that a bit. But, um... so see, I've learned a lot of spiritual things like that off you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still a little bitch sometimes. Um, your book is quite spicy. It's got some good stories in. Yeah. How was the process with the legal team? At one point, my my publisher, sorry, my book agent was like, I think maybe the lawyer's just not used to the direct way that you speak. Mm. Um, but then the lawyer was like, no, you, you really are very likely <laughs> to get sued. <laughs> you can't say so that someone's good at sex. Because you can't that's, say someone's good at sex? Because it's um, their private life and they could sue you. No wonder no one's written a book about me yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so you couldn't say that. Wow. Uh, there, there was but if one... you change the names, can't you? Because in yes, Catherine like... Ryan's book, I know she's changed a lot of... I was reading people, I think, oh, I wonder if that's them. And well, that's I, them. I heard she had similar... changed a lot of the details so that it was okay. Yeah. I did hear she had like similar things to me and hers. I've not mm. read her book, oh, but it's yeah, great. Wow. I, I heard there was similar legal problems. But like, um, what was the other thing that happened legally? Oh, very often the lawyer would be like, uh, "Can you say this? Can you? Um, is it is it okay to say that your grand are chatted you up?" And I'm like, "He's dead." I would just reply in cap capital letters, "He's dead." Um, and that's okay. Also, they made it sound so much worse than it was. Really? Like, well, d when the lawyer was like, your your granda was chatting you up, I was like, my granda had Corsicles, so it's like a alcohol induced dementia. Yeah. So he, he, he didn't. He wasn't chatting me up knowing it was his granddaughter. He was yeah, too yeah. early. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like he once said, he was locked out of the house, and my dad rushed over. No, he said the roof of his house had blown off. That was it. And my dad like rushed over because it was really windy and stormy. Mm -hmm. And my granddad was standing in his house, which was still fine, looking out the window and the roof of the shed had blown off. So he was very confused. Yeah. <laughs> We'd find him trying to like put, um, take his socks out of the washing machine, but nothing was there. So I just put that in because yeah, yeah. he was like funny. Can you say what you want about someone who's died or not? Yeah, if someone's dead, it's fine. Wow. But yeah. their family must be like, mm -hmm. Well, their, their family is my family. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Mm. My dad was amazing about the book. Oh, so really? I had to get my dad to, to email the publisher saying that he wouldn't sue. Oh, okay. Uh, and the publisher got a thing from my dad being like, but hello, not... this Fern's father, I won't sue. But he'd spelled sue wrong. <laughs> it's just like, I won't sure. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to clarify with him. Yeah, so to, yeah. he's been offering signed copies to his colleagues and I've had to say that I've said a few times that's not a good idea. Mm. Does he know he knows about all your background and everything stripping and all that uh, stuff? No, he doesn't. He doesn't if, know about stripping. If my dad no, well no, he do if my dad doesn't believe something happened, yeah. He's very good at pretending that it didn't okay. happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So So then so does he know what's in the book? Uh, my mum, I gave more of an overview, I said there's a lot of sex stuff in it and she just was like, I don't care. Um, really? That's good, that's nice of her. Yeah, but she will. She will care, right. Yeah, if you're, it's all about the shame that's brought on the family, like yeah. that's how Catholics work. Yeah. I don't feel it's the same as, it's always mad trying to explain Catholicism, like the, the flavour of Catholicism that we had uh, mm. in my area of Scotland, it's so, so strict. Um, and so sexist. Although I don't think any parents would be fine with you being. I mean, the shame. In, I mean, shame is such a deep thing that's in every family. But I know what yeah. you mean under the thing of a strict religious upbringing. Well, like I, when I was a little kid, um, I got told not to cross my legs in a skirt and stuff. There's like so yeah, many yeah, weird yeah, yeah. things. Yeah. You're just constantly taught to be weird about bodies yeah. and stuff. Which is another thing why it's good you've written a book to kind of destigmatize this stuff. Sex and well, the, the way I started writing the book was I'd been developing a script about stripping because it was quite a laugh when I did it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you've you've read it, so I just thought I've never seen this version of a strip club on TV before because mm. most of the job was just sitting in your underwear 
with like these two guys uh, that were disabled <laughs> watching the TV. So we'd just sit and watch documentaries and stuff and wait for customers to come in. Yeah. So I thought, oh, that would be a good script. That'd, be, that'd kept... be a good script, two people watching the telly. <laughs> <laughs> no, a load of strippers yeah, yeah. watching the telly with yeah. like just a guy with Down syndrome walking around shouting at everyone. But the BBC didn't want that. Mm. Um, and it got sent back about 20 times or something. So then I was like, I'm going to write a book. So I started off just writing about that. And I also couldn't understand any time I tried to explain how I felt about stripping, they just didn't know what I was on about. They were like, wanting me to talk more about being ashamed and stuff. Oh. And then I read about this autistic stripper in America called Reese Piper, who was like, of course loads of us end up in sex work. The lighting's fantastic. You can wear like quite a comfortable outfit. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of weirdos. It's basically impossible to get sacked in a strip club. Like you yeah. have to be bananas. Really? Even then they let you come back a week later. <laughs> Like, we had a girl who was hitting my boss with her shoe, but I actually found out he's since died, sadly. He was lovely. From the shoe? My, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was one of my first memories of the club I worked in. This girl was just like, he, he was trying to sack her, and she was just like hammering her shoe into him. Um, so things like that would happen every night, and it yeah. was so much fun. But anyway, you do end up with more, it sounds mental, and I feel like anyone who's bought this for their, like, their teen autistic daughter, they're going to be like throwing the book in the bin. No, I don't think but so. But... I'm not saying that if you're autistic, you end up working in a strip no, club. No, no, no. Yeah. But I wanted to highlight the fact that how come a strip club with its nice low lighting and its massive flexibility, why is that one of the good workplaces for autistic women? Because we should have more um, reasonable adaptations in workplaces. Mm. Like in the book I covered when I worked in an office and for no reason at all, I was told off for wearing headphones. It didn't stop me from doing my job at all. Yeah, um, that's funny, the office scene as well, when you just- Oh my like, God. <laughs> alien that, with these people, yeah. That job was so, so difficult. Mm. That's the, like, people always think stripping was the worst job. Working in offices was so hard. Like. I remember panicking about what I was going to say to them on Mondays with yeah. the small talk and yeah. the way women are with eating socially. I think Maria Bamford has a bit on that, being like, what are you having for lunch? What are you having for lunch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've never felt influenced socially by what other women are eating. Yeah. So I just didn't care about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I think it's more that it's so boring an office job. Sometimes, not mm. all of them. I've had, I, I've had, I, I've I had like the boredom. Yeah, well, I, I, the, the lunch for me in the boring, in, in the most boring ones, was the real highlight. It's like, oh, I get to like stop looking at this screen. I don't care about for. Do you mm. know what I mean? So it's more mm. like, oh, what are you having for lunch? It's just like, that's my chat because what else is there? Right. I think, I think for me, certainly, it's like that's the highlight of my day when I had, right. when I when I was in jobs I hated. Some office jobs are great, obviously. Um, mm. Talk me through the when you auditioned for the strip job. <laughs> <laughs> because that was that is funny. The imagine imagining you sort of auditioning the first time for a strip <laughs> because you've never been up a pole, right? So how did no. you like what? Um, well, like, you just learned that on the job. But you did a dance for the guy. I had to do a dance, yeah. And the and the boss was so sweet. He wasn't. Um, you'd think you'd go in and be some sleazy guy, but it was this guy that looked like he'd run a rotary club or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that helped, but um, I remember at the time one of my flatmates being like, I can't imagine you working in a strip club in a million years. And I was very young looking for my age as well, because I was yeah. like 20 when I started doing that. So I looked so, so young. Um, I mean, I trip over my own feet all the time, so that didn't bode well. But uh, basically another stripper does a dance for you. So you get a free lap dance. Yeah. And then um, I was kind of just trying not to look at her and her boobs were like hitting me in the face and stuff. Oh, wow. And then I had to do a dance for the guy. And the way that the proper stripper had done it was she'd sort of like slid down me all sexily. But with the boss, I just sort of like fell on him like stiff as a board and then just like <laughs> slid down him to the floor. So you were mimicking what she was done? Yeah, but so she does like a, dance, it was yeah. like a robot was doing Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So she's done the dance and you're like, okay, and then... Yeah. <laughs> it's really telling that I've made quite 
very easily made more money in comedy than I ever did stripping. Yeah. I was probably one of the worst strippers ever. Like, But they kept you on. You yeah, can't be that good. Because you, no, but you're paying a house fee all the time. Oh, right. Yeah, I never got sacked. Yeah. I was I was like one of the goody two shoes. You to get sacked, you honestly have to be, you would have to be caught kissing a customer or something. Yeah. Um, what they don't like then, that. No, you're not to. Yeah. You can't do any of that. Make back if they're really fit though. Um, Take it outside. That was really hard if someone was really fit, actually, because then mm. you would feel shy. Yeah. Um, you would feel really shy and embarrassed. Um, but what else was I going to say about it? I had so many mad stripper stories that I just couldn't put in the Why? book. Why? Because I was trying to stay on topic, so I tried to just keep in like yeah, yeah, yeah. the relevant stuff. That'll be for the sitcom. Well, I, I actually shared a page from the book the other day, and straight away, um, my old flatmate who I worked with mm. in the strip club, she got in touch and she was like, oh, um, do you remember these two regulars that used to come in? And they were like, Shortly after that club closed down, one of them was caught shagging a dog, and I was like, it's good to know we were the one thing <laughs> standing between these men and bestiality. Oh my god. I know. Wow. You were doing a service. Yeah. I mean, should stripping be provided on the NHS? No. Uh, well, it's all, <laughs> they don't exist anymore, do they? They, Strip feel like clubs. A, they feel like a thing that are going to be... There's some on Tottenham Court Road, I think, that go past. I really felt for you when you talk about masking. How exhausting mm. is it to mask every day? And yeah, how, how exhausting is it to sort of mask every day? And now I suppose. Yeah, I, well, to explain masking is where you hide your autistic traits to be accepted. So I, I remember when I was at school, my best friend was like, oh, you move your hands a lot and you fidget a lot. Mm. And then when I got diagnosed, I found out about stemming. And I had this idea in my head that stemming was what we, like when we see autistic people that have learning difficulties or non-verbal autistic people, they'll maybe flap their hands or like bang their head off the bus window yeah. or whatever. So I thought that was what stemming was, but yeah. I can see myself stemming when I'm on like when I was on Taskmaster, I could see it. I would like rub my hands together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd do that. Now or, another task coming up. <laughs> yeah, or like I got comments from so so this kind of that if I hadn't been diagnosed, this would really have bothered me. Mm. But I just don't care anymore. There was men online being like, why why does that the Scottish woman look so uncomfortable in her seat on Taskmaster? And it wasn't uncomfortable. I'm just, I can't sit still in my yeah, chair. Yeah. Um, but people were like, oh, she keeps squirming in her chair. And I'd been told off, when I got diagnosed and I got told about stemming, I suddenly remembered being on the set of a panel show where they were like, you have to stop moving your hands yeah, so much. Yeah. And they got me a set on my hands. Yeah. Um, so after I got told off for that, I was like, I better stop moving my hands at things. Yeah. So part of that is masking and it's so, so bad for you because it means all the mm. nervous energy is building up and building up. Yeah. Um, and then you get home and have a meltdown. It, is, it wouldn't just be from suppressing stimming though. It would be like, like I used to make myself go to parties that I didn't want to go to all the yeah. time. Yeah. Um, Cause I thought I was supposed to for work yeah, yeah. Or, or just I kept thinking, um, I kept thinking that I was going to enjoy parties eventually, and I do like some of them. Like, remember you invited me to your Kaylee? Oh yeah. <laughs> I love Kayleys. Yeah. And I really was excited about going. Didn't see you there, did we? <laughs> no, because I built it. I built it up in my head oh, so much. That was fun because you could get rid of all your energy by doing. It's very pure. Well, I'm thinking. I'm. I don't. I'm against marriage, but I might get several partners just so I can have a Kaylee. I thought you said several partners, and I was like, that's what no, we're doing. You got I'm against marriage. Thinking a Scottish accent. <laughs> yeah, Kaylee would be good. Yeah. Oh my god. So yeah. So the, your party was an example where I was like. I like Lou, I know that Aunt Annie, and uh, I know mm. that they like me and stuff, so it's mm -hmm. safe to go. But if I get too in my head about it, then I'll yeah. just end up talking myself out of it. Yeah. Um, it's amazing how, I know it's completely different, but it's amazing how so many people now have got anxiety where, I don't know if we just didn't label it before. After so lockdown. So many people will talk themselves out of... Yeah. I have to force myself to go to something and on the way I'll be like, why, 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 why am I going? And then sometimes it is not what I thought it was 
good or bad, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah. But it's like, but I just think we can't. Yeah, I think we should all turn up for a bit. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> just um, to like, just to push ourselves, because otherwise we end up. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. No, but even I like, I, what, once I got diagnosed, I started learning what environments I'm good in. So like, I love yeah. socialising with people where there's just one or two people. Yeah. Whereas if I was in a big group. I can't really follow different conversations yeah. at once. Um, yeah. And people, the only people that notice it are like my boyfriend mm. and um, my friend Alison, because she's she knows other autistic people. Yeah, they can just tell I've no idea what's going on. Yeah, so I can go from seeming not autistic. So, for example, last night I went to dinner with two of my friends, mm. and um, they sat us in a quiet bit of the restaurant. Uh, I don't know how they knew. <laughs> that was autistic. <laughs> and um, I was fine. But then I got the bus home with one of my friends. And because uh, I was with her and I didn't wear my noise cancelling headphones. And everyone on the bus was just playing their phone out loud. So she kind of no. noticed that I was just like struggling to yeah. talk to her. Because yeah. if it feels like being in a nightclub yeah. with all the different noises. Horrible. Yeah. But also, wear headphones. The basic of things, like don't play your phone out loud. It's so, I think that's so rude. Yeah, yeah. I now say to everyone, like if someone's on the tube and then I'll, I'll go over and be like, have you not got headphones? And usually, I mean, how have you not been stabbed? I know, it's weird, isn't it? Because yeah. I would love to do that. I've heard of... Well, I, I smile when I do it. Have you not got headphones? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what, like, noise cancelling headphones are the best thing I ever yeah. got. I think they should dish them out, headphones, as a public service. Yeah. Um, do you think um, mental health and... These are different things. Oh, uh, no, but you, I just meant yeah, yeah. when you told me about it. But um, do you think mental... Because you talk a lot about... Um, uh, having OCD when you were younger and your mental health not being good and well they di they misdiagnosed me with OCD because so this is a common yeah. thing that I didn't know um, and th another reason I wrote the book is that if you're an autistic um, woman especially we tend to follow the same pathway of like a lot of us have a terrible time transitioning from primary school to secondary school yeah because like um, in primary school you can be eccentric and you love to like uh, be the leader of all the games and stuff yeah. but then when you move to secondary that's not really something that's prized amongst teenage girls like yeah. a different set of things um, become desirable then I said that in such a weird way no, I had media I training last week I don't think you did I okay it's really interesting yeah okay yeah, so yeah. Right, I'll start again. Basically, a lot of autistic girls follow the same negative pathway where they go from primary to secondary school and they start having mental health problems because they start getting excluded. We then often end up in CAMS units, um, children and adolescent mental health units. Mm. Uh, we often get misdiagnosed with OCD. Loads of us get misdiagnosed with borderline personality disorder, which yeah. is a really stigmatising thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just before, the thing that pushed me to get diagnosed was I was trying to get diagnosed through my GP. And this man, who has never met me, who had just had a phone consultation with me, said, maybe you have borderline personality disorder. Yeah. And that anger, like, fueled me through the book. Yeah. Because I was going to send him a copy of the book, but then I thought he would just pick it up and go, Typical borderline move. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's that, what these twisted women do. <laughs> well, um, I go to a thing. I, I don't drink, as you know. And yeah, yeah. a lot of people have been diagnosed. A lot of alcoholics that have got sober were diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And then when they've got sober, everything's gone away. And they've been like, oh, it wasn't. It was just the alcohol. Yeah. So it's a bit of a mind field. Well, uh, and about mind that, a lot of um, a lot of alcoholics, uh, or a decent number of alcoholics and drug addicts are autistic people trying to yeah. um, mask their yeah, yeah, yeah. difficulties. Yeah. Someone that, um, I think you would know, someone that I know in comedy was an alcoholic and then got diagnosed autistic after a few years uh, after getting sober, Yeah. which is which I had suspected that was the case. Right. You, you sometimes see a quiet person just like drinking yeah. and you can tell that they don't enjoy social events and yeah. they're using the alcohol to... It's a real minefield to pick out. I mean, things have... Would you agree that things have got better? But I know we've still got a long way to go. But from when we were kids to now, I think people just didn't know as much about... Are there still misdiagnoses? I think um, in the next 10 years, 
specifically, sorry, I just spat on you there. <laughs> specifically with regards to autism, we're going to see massive progress being made. But because I sometimes feel really optimistic when I see what all the young autistics are mm -hmm. doing on um, Instagram and TikTok. Like one of the best people I follow is a 20 year old girl yeah. who puts out amazing information about autism. Yeah. What's her name? Uh, neurodivergent Lou. She's so, so good. Yeah, that's good. That's great. So yeah. things like that, people are taking it in their own hands well, to kind of get the power. It's all yeah, going to come yeah. from within the autistic yeah. community. Yeah. I don't think it will come from outside of it. And the good thing it. about them is when they're, all f when they're focused, they're really focused. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> so that's better than having yeah. a doctor who's got too much on it yeah. in her hands. Well, there's also, <laughs> speaking of that, there's an autistic doctor that yeah. runs a thing called Autistic Doctors International. Great. And that's like a group of doctors um, some of them are psychiatrists and a lot of them aren't uh, publicly autistic like they're not out as autistic at work yeah but things like that autistic doctors working together will make a big difference yeah because the ignorance among amongst doctors and medical professionals yeah. is frightening well yeah in every in every realm yeah think, yeah but it really makes a huge difference because um, so many autistic people present to psychiatric services when really they would be better off being diagnosed autistic yeah, and learning sure. how to live in a, a, a more autistic way. I mean, like the number, something like a third of women with anorexia, um, they're finding out now we're autistic. Uh, but the media still applies this incredibly infantilizing narrative that um, the reason women lose weight is because they they want to be thin, or the reason women are anorexic yeah, yeah, yeah. is because they want to be thin. It's control, isn't it? It's well, it might not yeah. even be control, it might be sensory issues with yeah, food. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, what well, you talk about in your show, it's simpler to just eat, eat one thing and when there's too much choice or... Oh yeah, yeah oh my yeah. god, like I've yeah. had times where I only ate eggs Yeah. Uh, <laughs> until I was ill, or like I... Sorry, it's not oh, funny. I'm, oh no, I'm, I love it. I think it's funny. Um, yeah, I just ate eggs July, until I ate egg ended up with, I was, oh my god, my summer of eggs was so awful. <laughs> and then, um, or like when, when I get stressed, I'm, I'm, this is something I'm trying to fix, I'll only eat um, toast for every single meal, which isn't good for you. You no, end up no, with no. vitamin deficiencies and all sorts. Yeah. So yeah, that's the thing is the the narrative applied to women around eating disorders is still so stupid. Yeah. Um. So I wish more medical professionals would ed educate themselves about autism. Other sorry to monologue. No, no, that's good. Yeah. Other stuff to do with um autistic mental health is. We're much more susceptible to mental health problems. Um, and I don't think it has to be that way. Yeah. It doesn't have to be as bad as it is. Um, and the suicide rate for autistic people without learning difficulties um, is nine times higher than the national average. Wow. And when I first told my boyfriend that, he was like, you can't mean, I think he thought, like my flavour of autism, what we used to call Asperger's, he was like, it can't possibly be that. And I showed him the research yeah. by a really good charity called Autistica. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's insane. Yeah, that is insane. Hopefully things will change after your book's out. <laughs> and it will single-handedly change everything. <laughs> but I love, yeah, but I love that the kids on TikTok and stuff are getting info out there and stuff. It's it's, it's so exciting. It's, it's something mm. that I feel like something people make fun of because, well, they do. No one make fun of it. No, people do. Do think, they? Yeah, <laughs> Do you yeah. like that sentence? No one make fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> no one make fun of TikTok. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be an accident. I'll say that again. Do people actually make fun of it? No. Just the other day, um, I saw some online autistic person was saying the the boss of PayPal, because I'm going to boycott PayPal after this, Yeah. Um, he referred to Greta Thunberg as part of the Autistic Children's Brigade, but the same guy has previously used, um, he's described autistic people as having a superpower because he wanted to employ them for his company. Mm. And this person, I know she's this great autistic influencer called Ellen Jones. Anyway, she was like, which one is it? Mm. So that's why I'm always wary of people saying to me, autism's a superpower. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's, mm. so bad. it's just neutral. Yeah. It's like yeah. the difference between an iPhone and an Android phone. We'd be better thinking of it that way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
Are there any positives from having survived such a turbulence of early life? Um, I think I'm resilient. Like, I sometimes see people post about adulting and learning to adult, and I think, (laughs) come on, (laughs) bloody hell. Come on, you're 42. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think it it, it made me resilient. It was definitely good for coming into comedy, because so much of comedy, I don't know if you had this during the lockdown, I looked back over all the terrible gigs I did with Mm. some very unusual people, Mm. (laughs) and, like... um, I think all the stuff that came before that was good preparation for that. Yeah. Like going from being, because I went, when I was, I got taken out of school and was put in a mental unit and then I was in a um, strip club with lots of men being pervy to me and the combination of those two things was really good preparation for being in stand-up. Yeah. What are you most proud of in the book? Um, what am I proud of? Well, I hate being earnest and vulnerable, mm. so I was like, I was that in the book. Yeah, but funny, so it's perfect. Oh, I didn't, fi- I didn't write it as a funny book. I genuinely wrote it as this is my most serious, earnest thing ever. And then I was saying to my boyfriend, I'm a bit disgusted at the end of the book, and it's no. like quite cringe. And he was like, none, none of it is cringe. None of it is cringe. And also it's about, it's about empathy and uh, forgiveness and redemption. And that's the most powerful mm. thing you can do is forgive someone. That's not, mm. to forgive someone is the most powerful thing you can do, I think. Mm. Yeah, it's just, well, you know, I don't know if you've seen any of my stand-up shows, but I hate when a stand-up show ends on a poignant note and goes, and in the end, aren't we all? <laughs> filled with love or whatever so I've always had a total aversion to that because I find um earnestness is now used to the point that it's become very insincere to me it's used as a currency in shows and stuff but I did I liked the end of your book because it was about it was about seeing someone else's like you know I mean the cliches sometimes are true we're all doing our best I guess and also if you use if you're very um if you don't ever use that kind of, if you're never like that normally, then it will be more powerful when you yeah, do use yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also nice for your mum to have. <laughs> like mm. a little we'll bit see. Of the end. <laughs> yeah. She's she's started being like maybe I should write a book, and I'm like, good luck with that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because I guess yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't think she would. You have to stay in the house for a year. Uh, yeah. She, she she was moaning about lockdown, so yeah. Um, okay, the last question is, what advice, and we've touched on it anyway, but what advice would you give um, people with children who might be neurodiverse or adults who might be neurodiverse? Um, in what context? What advice would I give them just generally? Yeah, to ease their life a bit. Mm, the thing, the biggest breakthrough I had was I felt really like disgusted when I got, oh, why am I, I don't want to, I hate when I suddenly feel emotions. Oh, no. Uh, that, we didn't cover that. <laughs> I've got a thing where I can't, I have no insight into my own emotions, so I'll just imme- like suddenly start to feel like I'm crying and then really? I go back to normal. Yeah, I put that in the book, I'll just abruptly start crying and yeah. then like push it back down for another 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, What emotion did you feel just a second ago then? Um, it's hard to name them. They told me I've got a thing called alexithemia, which I also talk about in the book. It's like I'm blind to, I only really understand basic emotions. I I just felt like sad and happy or something. Was it like, but what, why do you think it was? Because of the people, the other people, because the question was, I guess, what advice would you give them? And then it went Oh, and I'm thinking the advice I gave to myself. (gasps) Oh, why does that make you funny, I wonder? Because it's important. Yeah, because because of that because of that lost, like, girl and you. Mm, where yeah. that's oh, all right. I right hate to, this. It's all right to feel emotion though. It's all right. Well, to feel, I hope it like, doesn't happen at any of the other stuff. So basically, but you're allowed to feel emotion. We're human <sighs> beings. Everyone feels emotion. You're allowed to feel emotion. Oh, you're so nice. You're allowed to feel like it's a tough thing that you went through. You're allowed to feel. Well, basically, I felt really, really bad when I got diagnosed because I felt really, like, grossed out about the diagnosis and really bad about it. And I thought everyone's going to see me as, like, this, um, I don't know, just defective in some way. But then I have a friend um, who, uh, I'm, he basically thinks he's autistic, but he's not bothering getting a diagnosis, mm. he's, but he's very autistic. <laughs> 
And all the things I like the best about him are autistic things. He knows lots of interesting facts. Like, he's just, he'll come out with really random stuff. He's very honest. And I'd, I'll not talk to him for months at a time, but we can always just, like, pick up where we left off. So I thought, if I like him for his autism, yes. then I can like myself. Yes. Oh, like, oh this is so embarrassing. No, it's not embarrassing at all. You're giving someone the gift of being able to like themselves. Yeah. Sometimes we have to do that through other people, but yeah, I mean, yeah, until we get there ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. We, we just end it with me, like, with tears <laughs> in my eyes, looking furious at myself. But that's, that's so really, disgusting. But that's a really good point. Like, we are all different, and you have to embrace the differences. Like, you, you, yeah, know, yeah. you do know really interesting things, and... Yeah, you know, yeah. You, people do like your honesty. Oh, but when I was diagnosed, I really was focusing on all the bad things and how they were never going to get better. Yeah. But actually, but weirdly, Taskmaster, which yeah. I only like, was excited about because I'm getting my kitchen done and yeah. it's expensive. No, and it's a great show. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but you have to say that. Yeah, but yeah, being yeah. honest, yeah. I was excited about the money. But then yeah. by the end, on the final day of filming, I was like howling, crying yeah. because watching myself on camera normally I have like this hot, absolute fear of watching myself and I hate my voice because I worry it sounds autistic or that like, my posture is autistic or the way I move is just so off and then from watching myself on it and seeing like loads of people got in touch with me to say you move like me and uh, they would be like I'm autistic and just the way you move your ankle on stage they yeah. spotted all these weird little things about me yeah, yeah so yeah. that was really really yeah. um, an amazing experience and also people found me very endearing I know my producer of the Taskmaster podcast oh, the yeah. same one, he was like I love watching fans she's so endearing she's like a sort of you know, sometimes like a lost kid, sometimes a bit like odd, but very, very endearing. Yeah, but that, that, was, that was me in an environment where I was encouraged to be at my best. Like I can yeah. also be cold and aloof and have been with people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to make out I'm this like um, very pure. Oh, no one is. Yeah. yeah. But it did bring I'm out the... bitch. <laughs> and I've done so much spiritual work. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but sometimes when you just look on camera like this, if like, you didn't know what was going on, it was really cute and funny. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes I really didn't know what was going yeah. on. And so. that's an interview. Yeah. By the book. <laughs>